Daniel is back. And in this video, we're going to talk about options, which are a special type of quote unquote collection in Scala. Options solve what Tony Hoare calls his billion dollar mistake, and that was the invention of the null pointer in 1965. He says he couldn't resist the temptation to put in a null reference because it was too easy to implement. So null references are basically the bane of our existence, and this causes the crashes that we know as null pointer exceptions. To guard against these null pointer exceptions, we often resort to all sorts of checks, which leads to all sorts of spaghetti code and things that are hard to understand. So we would need some kind of data type that could encapsulate the possible absence of a value. So these are options. An option is a wrapper for a value that might be absent. And this is the definition of the option type in Scala, which is extended by two case types. A case class sum, which wraps a concrete value, and the case object none, which means the absence of a value. So if you've noticed, this option type is strikingly similar to the maybe type that we wrote in a previous exercise some videos ago. But we're approaching options here with a different philosophy. Instead of considering options to be collections with at most one element, options mean the possible absence of a value. Options are present in many places throughout the Scala standard library, for example in maps when we want to get a value associated with a key, instead of calling the apply method which might throw an exception, we usually call the get method which might return a value or it might return something that is absent. Another example is with lists, because, for example, trying to access the head of an empty list used to throw an exception if you remember from our list implementation, or finding something which uh, passes a predicate. This also might or might not return a value. We designed these functions to return an option. So options are pretty popular in Scala code because we want to avoid the null pointer like the plague. So in part three functional programming, let's create a new Scala class and actually see how they work. Let's call these optional options or optionals or let's call this options okay and make this an object of course and make this extends app yes so let's go and create our first option let's call this my first option which is an option let's say of int so this is the data type that might or might not have an int value here and the way that you would build options like you saw earlier would be to just call sum or none. So just like that. So let's print these out to the console, although it's pretty obvious what they do. So if I print my first option, I'm going to see sum four to the console. Yes. Now options were invented to deal with unsafe APIs. For example, let's say I have my super unsafe method, which uh, is supposed to return a string, but due to some implementation, it seems to return null. All right, so say that someone else wrote this method and through uh, one of the code paths, it returns null. So some programmers, given an unsafe method, might be tempted to call sum with a value which might be null. So they would write something like val result would be sum that receives the results of unsafe method. But this is wrong because you might be getting sum with null, which basically breaks the whole point of options sum should always have a valid value inside, so you should never do this. Instead, use the option companions apply method. So you would say something like val result is option with unsafe method. And the apply method from the companion object option would take care to build a sum or none depending on whether this value is null or not. So you don't need to do null checks yourself. So in this case, if I print this out to the console, if I print result, I'm going to get none. 
So the whole point of options is that we should never do null checks ourselves. The option type will do this for us. The way that we would use options would be in chained methods. So say for example that this unsafe method returns null, but a safe method, let's call this backup method, which also returns a string, and uh, returns something, which is, let's say, a valid result. So in practice, when you have an unsafe API and a safe API, which is for backup, the way that you would write a chained result would be to say option with unsafe method. And in the case that unsafe method returns null, then this guy is none, then you can say dot or else option with backup method. So in the case that unsafe method returns null, unsafe method is your preferred API, but it, in the case that this guy is null, then you can fall back to option of backup method and use that instead. So this is how you work with unsafe APIs. Now, if you're on the other end of programming and you design unsafe APIs, then make your methods return option of something in the case of returning nulls. So here's what I mean. If you want to redesign this API with unsafe method and backup method, you could design a better unsafe method to return, instead of a string, return an option of string. And then follow your simple code flow and return an option of string instead of null. So in this case, it will return none. And a better backup method will return an option of string. And in this, guy, in this case, we'll return sum with a valid result. And when you work with safe APIs, you get a better chain result which is better unsafe method or else better backup method, which is so much more readable. And also safer because I, as a user of an API, I need to take care to wrap your uh, API into options. But if you design your APIs to return options, I don't need to care about doing that and just use the functionality that you provided me with. All right. Let's discuss some functions on options. We have some small functions like is empty and get. So if I print line, say my first option dot is empty, then this will return false. So is empty is a good test for options, whether they have a value or not. So if I quickly run this, I'm going to get false. We also have dot get. So get tries to retrieve the value from an option, but this is unsafe. It's like trying to access a null pointer. If the option is null, getting the value out of an empty option will throw a null pointer exception. So do not use this. This basically breaks the whole uh, option idea. There are edge cases where get is useful, but in general, do not use this. Then we have our little favorites, map, flat map, and filter. These are extremely useful. If I say my first option dot map, and then I multiply the value by two. Okay, so the shorthand notation for x arrow x times two, then I'm going to return sum of eight. Also filtering, And filtering can turn an option with a value into an option of no values if the predicate doesn't match. So if I have sum of four and I'm testing whether x is bigger than 10, then my first option dot filter with this guy will turn sum of four into none. 
and that is because for does not match the predicate. And finally, flat map. And this guy receives a function that turns an element into an option. Say option of, uh, let's say, x times 10. So this will turn sum of 4 into sum of 4t. OK, good. Now, because we have map, flap, and filter, we also have four comprehensions. And I want you to use map, flat map, and filter and four comprehensions in the following exercise. So, assume you are given an API from some other programmers. You are given a val called config, which is um, a network configuration. This is a map from string to string. And let's just say it's a map with the following associations. Host is, let's just say it's an IP, like uh, 176.45.36.1, some uh, IP address. And the port is, say, 80 for HTTP. And you're given a class called connection. Right? Your purpose is to establish one such connection. This connection class has a connect method, which just uh, returns a string called connected. This in reality would connect to some server. Okay. Now the companion object for this connection would have an apply method. which receives a host, which is a string, and a port, which is a string. And this returns an option of connection. Okay, so somebody else writes this function for you. And I'm going to implement it for you. Here's what I'm writing. I'm going to create a random number generator. New random and I'm going to give it a seed with system not now time. And I want to import, say Java util random and scala util random. They are basically equivalent. You can import either. Okay. And this apply method returns a connection or no connection depending on the random choice. All right. So this basically simulates the possibility of a connection or a faulty connection to the server. So it says if random dot next boolean okay so on a whim I'm going to return some connection otherwise none. So this is a safe API that returns an optional connection given a host and a port. Okay. The trouble is that this config, which is a map from string to string, contains some values that were fetched from elsewhere, like a configuration file or from another connection or from somewhere else, but you do not have the certainty that the key host and the key port have values inside this map. Okay. So the values for host and port might or might not be here. So this is written by somewhere else, and these, these values are fetched from elsewhere. The class connection with the apply API was written by someone else. What I want you to do is try to establish a connection. If you can establish a connection, print the connect method. Right? So basically call connect on the connection. So basically your situation here is you have some values that might or might not be there and you have an API that might or might not return a connection. What I want you to do is try to establish a connection 
given all these uncertain things in your scenario. Now, I understand that this exercise might not be incredibly intuitive right off the bat. So I want you to understand the problem really well if you need to rewind the video and pause the video to think about this. All right, and I will be back with a solution in a few seconds. So I hope you gave this uh, problem a good thought. Here's a possible solution. So basically what we want is to obtain a host and a port which might or might not be there and given these call the apply method which might or might not return a connection if we have a connection then we'll just call the connect method if we don't out of luck all right so this is basically our logic so let's obtain the host and the port first so the val host is config dot get with a key host. This is an option of string. Then we need the port, which is config dot get port. This is an option of string as well. Now we need to be able to obtain the values contained within these options and pass them on to the apply method. But the only way to do that would be either to get to try to get the value out of the options which is unsafe and we don't want that and the only other alternative is to use functionals so let's try to obtain the connection and here's how we're going to write this we're going to say host dot flat map and given the host that we assume is there it might not be there then port dot flat map and given the port that we assume is there, it might not be there. Then we call connection.apply with host and port. Okay. And connection.apply returns an option of connection. So the type of this connection value is going to be option of connection. So the connection status that we're interested in is connection dot map so given the connection that we assume is there it might not be there then we need to call the connect method on the connection so this is an option of string which basically says that if connection is there then the connection status will contain the connectivity if you will of connection okay so at the end what we need to do is say connection status dot for each and then just call print line and just to be safe if connection status is empty let's just print this to the console as well so print connection status okay so this is the solution let's right click and run this and we get none here and because we get none at the end we don't print anything to the console Let's try to run again. Again, none. Again, none. Some connected. So finally, our connection connected. So connection status was sum with the status connected. Okay. So we printed out this exact status. I understand this might not be too intuitive, but the basic logic here and uh, I'm going to annotate this with what you would write in, um, in a more conventional language is the following. So here above connection, host.flatmap h basically says that if h exists, so basically if h is not null, then port.flatmap and if p is not null, then return connection.apply with h and p. Okay, otherwise return null. So this is the equivalent imperative code that this functional code does here. All right, now for connection status, the logic is basically if uh, connection, if c is not null, 
then return c.connect. Otherwise, return null. Right? And the print the print line says basically if um, connection status equals null print none else print whatever it has connection status print sum connection status get so something like that okay and for each print line the logic is if the connection inside is not null or the status actually if the status inside is not null then print line status otherwise don't do anything okay so this is the equivalent imperative code that this functional code actually does it's not easy to think about this but it will get natural to you once you start using options more in practice Okay, so this was the, the long explanation. Let's try shorter ones. So another um, possible solution would be to use four comprehensions, but before that, let's chain all of these values here. So basically said, we, we are saying config.get host, then flat map. Now given a host, then we get config dot get port then dot flat map and given a port we try to get a connection so connection host port and then finally we get a map And for the connection that we obtain, we try connection.connect. And finally, we call for each print line. So this is the shorthand solution. This is the chained method solution. Okay, so let's try not to print connection status. Actually, let's print it. Or, oh, these things will return different things because the uh, random number generator will generate new numbers this time around. Okay, so it doesn't really make sense. Okay, so let's just run this as is. Okay, so we get none. And we get some connected and connected. And we get some connected, connected. This was the first iteration. And for the chained operations, we also get connected. So this is the uh, chained solution to the problem. Okay. This is most likely how you would get in practice. So chained calls. But finally, we're going to use four comprehensions. Because like you know already, map, flat map, and filter can be turned into four comprehensions. So we're just going to say that val connection status is four. And given a host which is obtained from config.getHost, given a port which is obtained from config.getPort, now, given a connection, which is obtained by calling connection with these two guys, then given all of these, then yield connection.connect. Now, what happened? Oh, I think I already defined this. Oh, yes. Let's call this for connection status. And this should be fine. So if you paid attention to my phrasing here, this for comprehension reads as given a host which is obtained from this guy, given a port from this guy, and given a connection from this guy. So assuming host, port, and connection are not null, then give me connection.connect, which is at the end an option of string.
Otherwise, give me none. So if either host port or connection are none, then this for expression will return none. And finally, all I have to do is say for com connection status for each print line. Okay, this is all I need to do. I think you will agree that the for way of writing is much more readable. So again, a hard exercise to think about, but I want you to get options right because you will likely use them in practice. All right, recap time. So use options to stay away from nulls, to avoid runtime crashes, to uh, null pointer exceptions, and avoid an endless spaghetti of null assertions. Options are a functional way of dealing with the possible absence of a value. You've learned how to use map, flat map, and filter. You learned how to use or else to chain unsafe APIs. And there are quite a few other handy functionals to use. Remember, if you design methods that might return nulls, use options instead. All right, I'm Daniel. I hope you found this useful, because it is. <laughs> and I will be seeing you in the next video, where we will talk about handling failure.